Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falses are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Open borders, closed borders, it truly is a grab bag when it comes to the question of immigration, legal and especially illegal. Let's begin with China, which recently announced that it's become much more family friendly. Yeah, you heard that right. Since the death of Mao Zedong in 1976, China became extremely violent towards the idea of children instituting its savage one-child policy, along with forced abortion as the enforcement mechanism for that policy. Sidebar, Joe Biden, the devout Catholic, never had a problem with that and was instrumental in gaining the Chinese the much-coveted most favored nation trade status during his time in the U.S. Senate. Over the ensuing decades, the Chinese communists relented somewhat here and there occasionally, rolling back some aspects of the one-child forced abortion policy. But as the decades wore on, the commies in charge realized that killing your future generations, well, that doesn't make for good long-term prosperity. So this year, in a complete about-face, the child-killing commies in Beijing are now encouraging couples to have babies and even talking about expanding government-paid-for child health care. Who'd have thunk, even a few years ago, that the commies in China would understand how bad abortion is before American political leaders? China's current president, Xi Jinping, now backtracking. We're talking about the same guy who banned Disney's Winnie the Pooh after a slew of memes saying he looked like the cartoon character himself. Kind of does, actually. The whole murderous mindset began back in the mid to late late 1970s, and as the myth of overpopulation was becoming entrenched around the world, well, the Chinese caught on to that, too. The Chinese communist solution to poverty was simply kill the poor, much like American foreign policy has been since Obama and is now on steroids under Biden. But when the economic toll of killing off your future generations begins to be realized, well, emergency overdrive measures are deployed. All of a sudden, in countries around the world, governments are pro-child in an effort to increase their populations. Imagine that. But despite its 180-degree turnaround, China has made very clear it will not be opening its borders to immigration as part of the strategy to bolster its lopsided demographics. Bringing in foreigners en masse is not seen as a viable option to solve its problems, so says Beijing. So now let's shift to D.C., shall we? It seems just the opposite approach is in favor. That is, kill your native-born future generations and fix the population problem through nothing but immigration, especially illegal immigration. Consider what the Marxist Democrats have done in D.C. They supported in virtual complete lockstep to deny health care to babies who survive abortion. Minus one Dem, it was unanimous. This, of course, on top of the bill they passed last term when they were in control to enshrine abortion up to and beyond birth as the law of the land. The Dems are abortion crazy, but they're also illegal immigration crazy. Biden has only been in the Oval Office two years almost exactly, and estimates are between three and five million illegals have just walked across the southern border. Add those numbers to the estimated 12 to 15 million already in the U.S., and those are low ball estimates for the record, and there's a sizable illegal population in the United States beginning to approach 10% of the entire population. But there's a Catholic angle to this whole story as well, abortion and illegal immigration. In near complete defiance and distortion of Catholic teaching, The U.S. bishops not only continue to defend the party of death with their silence and permission for the murderers to receive the sacraments, they also get, the bishops, hundreds of millions of dollars each year from these same child murderers to wipe out the nation's borders. On abortion and illegal immigration, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more warped application of church teaching than that followed by the U.S. hierarchy, such as the effects of Freemason modernism. The Chinese communists are actually further developed on this than the U.S. bishops. Wow. 
On the question of destroying the borders under the guise of being Christian, the U.S. bishops not only get huge amounts of money from D.C. each year to handle and process these millions of illegals, they also get to inflate their own numbers, the bishops. The major countries where illegal immigration comes from flooding across into the United States are Mexico, Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Now get this, 72% of Mexicans are Catholic. 60% of Cubans are Catholic. For Nicaragua, it's 73%. And Venezuela is 98% Catholic. So, more than, putting it all together, average 75% of illegals coming into the U.S. are Catholic to some degree, meaning the overwhelming number of the total illegal population in the U.S. is Catholic. Millions of people sitting in Catholic churches each week are illegal immigrants. What does that do to the headcount of U.S. Catholics published each year by the bishops? Well, it presents a false picture, that's what. Well, there's really no real way to determine the exact number of how many illegals comprise the official headcount of Catholics in the country. Some basic assumptions can be made to arrive at some decent guesstimate. So, there are approximately 20 million illegals in the U.S., and roughly three-quarters are Catholic, so about, let's say, 15 million or so. Assuming about half attend Mass are somehow counted in the bishop's numbers, we get roughly 7.5 million Catholics on the rolls who are in the country illegally. Additionally, we also know that the percentage of white Catholics, largely from European stock, has been in a free fall for decades and shows no sign of turning around. So, what this all translates to is this. There's an asterisk next to the claim that the Catholic Church is the largest religion in the country. Not exactly. There's also a big caveat when we talk about the percentage of Catholics in the U.S. relative to the entire population. Also, not presented accurately. So let's start with that second one first. Catholics number about 62 million in the U.S., according to the bishops, which translates to about one in five Americans, roughly. So about 21% is the number, and it means it's the largest single religion in the country. But... If you suck out roughly 7 million plus from that total because they're not actual citizens, the overall percentage of Catholics relative to the population drops to just 16%. The conclusion of the math here is very easy. Illegal immigration is keeping the bishop's numbers artificially high. The real percentage is something much lower than the stats being published. This also points to the reality that if illegal immigration were not a thing, at least in the massive numbers that it is, the Catholic Church in the U.S. would have long ago slipped from its exalted status of the single largest religious body in the country to second place and, depending on how you count some Protestant denominations, perhaps even third. Christianity in general in the U.S. is on a downward spiral, but leading the race to the bottom is the Catholic Church. Artificially inflating enrollment numbers by including people who are not citizens cannot continue to mask this reality. Church leadership lost its way here in the U.S. decades ago, and current leaders simply have no answer for any of this. Obviously, in the end, it's not strictly a numbers game. That said, numbers do occupy a place of importance. They do reveal some things, perhaps not perfectly, but they aren't nothing either. And when they shore up and match up with other data, then an overall picture can begin to come into focus. European descendant Catholics are leaving the church, have been for generations now. The church is becoming increasingly Hispanic, roughly 40% overall. And while those trends continue, the one the bishops will not talk about is the increasing dependence on illegal immigration to keep the numbers and the ranking artificially propped up. Overall, in fact, there's very little you could label as success that the bishops could point to. Their politics are bound up with an image of their grandfather's Democratic Party, which hasn't existed for 60 years. They feed way too much at the trough of federal tax dollars. Most don't seem to either know or believe the faith, and to whatever degree they might, they're ineffective at communicating it. It's interesting that you know that the Chinese commies have grasped that they were marching down the wrong road and decided to turn around. It's even more interesting that the U.S. bishops have not. Talk about weird.
God love you. I'm Michael Voris.